taxi. Alright you guys, so in this video we're going to be transitioning the Creighton 8S EXB and its chassis over to the M2C chassis. And I actually bent this EXB chassis in a previous video, you guys saw that. If you saw that video and you subscribed in order to see this video, I appreciate it. But I bent the EXB chassis off of just a couple simple jumps. Yeah, there was a big ramp, but uh, still not terrible enough where it should have bent and broke as much as it did. Um, I was going to go ahead and transfer everything over to the new one while it was still kind of partially torn apart. But I decided to put it back together and do a full video transitioning over to this new chassis. If you're going to do this to your EXP, maybe consider doing a setup like I'm getting ready to do here. Anyways, let me go ahead and get started with the step-by-step -step guide on how to transition to a brand new chassis with this specific RC car. As you can see, I've got three different tables set up and I'm going to be using all three to keep everything organized so that I don't miss any screws, that I don't miss a part and putting everything back together. We're going to start with putting the chassis together so that it's ready to accept parts as they transition over, but there's going to be a method to this madness. Um, but if you just take your time, follow along with me, do things one step at a time, and clearly indicate where you're going to be placing all of your screws, this will be a much smoother process. So before we even get into the Creighton and starting to take things apart, let's move the camera in over to the workbench, zoom in on the M2C chassis, and let's go ahead and get that one put together and prepped so that we can start moving parts over. So it says crate in front, crate in rear. Got some screws that are separated out for that. Got this top brace that goes all the way across, and then these two side braces, which will go on either side there. A couple of stickers. We're definitely going to put that up on our cabinets. Okay. That says front and we're going to have everything pointed in this direction. So we will point this towards the front as well. It should be pretty obvious once you start lining things up where everything goes. And you've got these screws here and here. So of course all of these screws are going to go in from the bottom, they're countersunk. Alright, so we're going to start with these two side pieces here. So I'm going to take this center brace off. Now these side pieces came with eight screws in total. We're going to be using six. They give us two extra ones. If you go over here to these three holes here, the next one over slightly up is where that first one is going to line up. So you've got five holes here. You're going to line the first one with this one right here. You're going to use this hole, this hole, and that hole. Put those three screws in and match it on the other side so it's identical. We're going to use Loctite on these because these do not accept the locking nylons. That's not what these are for. So we're going to put some Loctite, blue Loctite, on each of these screws and get those screwed on. Now you might have some Loctite that kind of seeps through. I'm just going to leave that. That's going to solidify and help hold those down. All right, so next up, still got our front over here. And we can see this is Creighton front. So looks like, unfortunately, the, the lettering does not all face the same way. But that's okay. I'm going to line this up here. Line up all of our holes. There we go. And now for this center piece, we're also going to use these brackets. You can see that says front. I'm 
and rear. Now they say you can leave one of these screws out to allow it to flex some. Me personally, I don't want it to flex at all. So um, I'm going to put all of the screws in. So this fits on the rear like so. Like I said, these are all going to use the nylon locking nuts. I'm also going to use Loctite just to be safe. Okay, now that that's on, we've got our extra parts over here. We can get rid of those. And now from here, we're going to go ahead and label our three tables. So this is always going to be the front over on the right side. And on the left side, that will always be the rear. That will help us keep everything together as we're taking things off of the old chassis. Front and rear. And all I'm doing here is just marking my table. You guys can see that. That's going to be the rear. This side's going to be the front. Over here, same thing. All right, that's just how I'm going to do it. It'll be easiest for me to do that in that way. So next up, we're going to take the wheels off the crate. And of course, we're going to take the body off. So next up, I'm just going to remove all of the body posts. And one of the reasons why I have the tables set up front and rear, because I want to put these body posts in the directions that they're supposed to go um, by themselves somewhere else. So as we start taking these pins off and out, I want to be able to put the pin and the position. So we've got four points here and four points on the ends. I want to make sure that on the table, this is top left. And I put this pin with here and that's top left but on that side of course furthest to the rear and w once i start doing it you guys will see what i mean and i'll just move this over to this table right here in that position so let me go ahead and do that all right so now i've got three of them out the last one is a little bit harder to get to because of the motor so we're actually going to take out the ESC and the motor, well, I'm sorry, when we go to take out the motor and the transmission, we'll take out that last um, piece as well. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and move to taking out the ESC receiver and this whole box right here. We're gonna start by removing the screw, but then we can just take everything from the ESC out in one go right after we unplug the motor wires. So we're gonna remove the steering link screw right up here. From there, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the motor wires. We're gonna clip this zip tie that's holding our sensor wire. And clip that off, sensor wire comes off. And now with that, we can go ahead and remove the screws holding on this receiver box. And it should just be these four screws right here. And just be mindful and ready to catch that so it doesn't Oh, and now we can lift the whole assembly out. What I like to do is just put these screws right back where they came out of. We've got this out and we'll just set it right there. Now from here, we can go ahead and remove the transmission and the motor screws and this whole assembly will come out along with that post right there. So it should be one, two, three, and four and then that should come out. Of course, when you take this out, huh, look at that, you guys. We actually broke an end right here. I was not aware of that. So we could have taken this out, but <laughs> if I would have known that it was broken, I would have ordered that part. So normally we would take this last pin over here out, slide this out, and that up. I'm just going to put this back on so we don't lose it. Lift this up enough so we can get that out. These, because they lock in place, these will not fall out. So we'll be able to take those out when we take the front and the rear off. But there's our motor, transmission, and ESC all removed. So we'll just set that over here. And like I said, normally this would be connected like that. 
but now I've got to get a replacement post there. Again, we don't want to misplace our screws, so I'm just going to take these and just thread them into the bottom here. And then we have our one screw for our steering link. And I'm actually going to put this back in here. All right, so from here, we're going to go ahead and take all of our plastics off. That includes this brace here, our battery trays, both of them, and then our side panels. And what we're actually going to do is move all of the, the plastic bits over to the new chassis since that is a pretty easy transfer before we continue disassembling the front and the rear. So I know there's a lot of screws on this part, but just take your time. Most of them will be the same size other than that center tower. They're going to have these four larger screws, but the rest of them, you really can't mess up where they go back. So as you can see, all of those screws there are, are the same size, so we're good. Take. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this half and go ahead and attach it to the new chassis with all the all of the screws that we just took out and basically just do one half at a time so that I'm not uh, misplacing anything. One thing to keep in mind is when you take this side out over here there's a nut that accompanies that screw from the very far front part of that plastic cover. All right so let's go ahead and bring all of this over to the other table. Of course, you can go in and clean up all of your plastics <laughs> if you want to, but I know I'm just gonna run this thing uh, and get it dirty again anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. So that should line up exactly where the other one came off. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other battery tray, side skirt, side cover, um, just like I said, keep in mind the one up here where that one screw goes in um, has a nut that you need to be mindful of. So now we're going to go get the center tower off the other one and move that one over as well. Now for this, we're going to take these two top screws out here. This comes out and we will just put these right through there so we don't lose those. So now at this point, honestly, it's just the front and rear diff. So we're gonna start with the rear since we know that those rear posts screw in right there. Let's go ahead and swing the camera back around. And to take off the rear, we've just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Simple as that. Now, just like with the transmission, when you take this off, you're gonna have the differential gear exposed, so try not to get that dirty, and then also check to see if you have enough grease in there. All right, so from here, this plastic piece is actually being held on and kind of clamped to this chassis, so we're gonna have to possibly take this rear off, but let me see if I can just slide it out. So I am going to have to remove these screws just so that we're not applying any additional force. There we go. Now that rear slides right off. Okay, so now we're going to take this just like this. And I already know the grease is good here. Set this up. Flip this upside down right back on the same way it came off. So of course we want to make sure that our drive shaft goes underneath that tower and as we draw this in we're, we're watching that red block making sure that that doesn't you know start to scrape against the side because that, mean, that means something isn't quite lined up properly. All right now with that the rear is done and Man, that looks looks really good. Nice and straight. Love it. I think, I think that the guy said something about the rear brace not being needed, but I need to check that. So on his website, it does say that this small rear brace doesn't work with this chassis. Um, I may just go ahead and screw this in upside down. It's not gonna get in the way of anything by doing that, rather than 
you know, like this because of that bottom brace being just in the way. So I'm actually going to run it like this. And should be good to go like that. So let me go ahead and drive these screws back in and then we'll move on to the front. All right, so that rear brace is on, flipped upside down, so. <laughs> this thing is so rigid now. Should be no concerns uh, with that at all. Doesn't get in the way of the drive shaft spinning, and there's nothing back here other than the batteries. So, should be okay like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two little ones, seven, eight, just like the rear. All right, so for now, I'm actually going to just steal the end off of one of these other posts because it will be a lot easier to get to those once I actually get a replacement in the mail than to uh, you know try to get back at this one. All right, so just a really quick note. Um, when I removed the front off of the other chassis and I put it onto this one, I did not think about the amount of grease that was left over on the other chassis. So I wanted to take this back off and fill it back up properly with grease. And then I realized that if you're gonna put this back together, it's actually much easier to put the motor back on to get that, because that drive shaft, especially since we flipped this brace over and put that brace back on, put the motor back in first and then go ahead and slide the front on and the differential into the transmission in that order. And I was looking at the screws that I took out of the motor mount and I was thinking about like the limitless and other armored vehicles. Normally there's three screws holding the motor mount in and lo and behold, there's one right there, but I don't have a screw for it. And it looks like there's actually a little bit of a gap anyways between where that screw goes in and the bottom of the motor mount, but I put one in there, but it ran this long without it, so. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the front back on. Don't want to lose that. For our link, the screw's right there, so we'll just leave it there for now. All right, so now we're gonna start putting these braces back on. All right, you guys, so that's it. Last thing, really. Of course, we wanna connect our motor wires in the correct order. We've got our sensor wire. Okay, so other than putting the four tires on, that is finished. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please let me know by leaving a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content on the Creighton or really anything else RC related. I try to do as much as I can for the channel. Anyways, thank you again. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.